thanks for for coming um um my brother looking forward to uh to sharing the word with you and and learning from you looking very much forward to some powerful stuff from 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 about you so i'm looking forward to it <laughs> yeah you mustn't believe anything you hear from other people hey <laughs> <laughs> okay guys we are live on facebook hey eh? i think we are we are we can start um Good evening, everyone, and welcome. And thank you for joining us yet again on the weekly Sabbath School lesson study. Um, it's a privilege here to be here this evening. Um, last week, I mentioned that there's people joining us from near and from far. And we've mentioned that there's a following in Calfinia. And um, I just heard earlier today that there was individuals watching us all the way from Australia and Austria. So wherever you find yourself, whatever time it might be, it's just after seven uh, Central African time. I want to warmly and heartily welcome you and greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our personal Savior. We are going into it yet again, and this is lesson number seven, which is entitled Education and Redemption. I'd like to start off by reading the verse or the scriptures for this week which is found in 2 Timothy 2, verse 13. Um, 2 Timothy 2, verse 13, that says, All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, and that is 2 Timothy, forgive me, 3 verse 16, and that was from the New King James Version. Before we do anything else, can we close our eyes for prayer, and I'm going to ask Brother Gigi, Bishop Gigi, which is Bishop yes. Gareth, all the way from Aldana, just to open for us in, with a word of prayer. Hi, uh, funny man, Fritz, thank you, thank you. Can we just bow our heads, please? Father, even Lord, we... Uh... Thank you so much, Lord, for this privilege of discussing your word, Lord. And we ask that you will guide us, Lord. You will guide those who are listening, those who are on the panel. And I pray, dear God, that you will bless us and help us to be more edified and uh, have a better understanding of you after this lesson. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, for that, and forgive me, um, I was very, very much excited. The lesson study is entitled Education and Redemption. Education and Redemption. And uh, I was just corrected. It's lesson study eight. Forgive me, I got too excited over here. And the reason <laughs> for my is very simple. It is because we are blessed here this evening to have a panel with power. Um, it, it, it reminds me of the Chelsea team of the 2004-2005 season where we dominated <laughs> under the leadership of Jose Mourinho. But I don't want to get involved too much into that. So having said once, the panel, starting from Brother Gigi, Bishop Gigi, uh, Brother Kevin, yeah. Brother Enver Lowe, and our, and our special, special guest, uh, the man of the hour, Brother Rudy Demas, just to introduce himself and give a short <laughs> description to tell the viewers that's watching from Yenfa just a small bit about yourself. Over to you, panel. All right. Um, see that I'm from the furthest away. I live in Saldana Bay for the last 13 years. I uh, grew up in Athlone Church. Um, and uh, yeah, we came in 20, well, 2008. And um, yeah, we have a small church here in the area called Diazville. We have about 30 people, 30 members, and um, we, are, we share the word of God here. And uh, yeah, we love talking about him and um, honoring him and praising him. And um, yeah, we had a lovely first Sabbath on the beach, um, the Sabbath, yesterday. And it was really blessed to see God's creation. And yeah, you, just, you just feel very different. We found a spot between two rocks. And I think I'm getting carried away here. Guys, look on Facebook. And find me, check the pictures out, and please, please, I hope this will this will um, inspire you guys to come and visit us because we're always, always looking for preachers down here. 
and uh, yeah, we love it. So thank you so much. Good evening, and uh, my name is Kevin. I was born in Zimbabwe, but currently I'm living in Cape Town, South Africa. I am in Haderfield Estate Church, and I enjoy myself there because of the worship and also the people here. And I do hope that today, uh, this evening, as we go through this lesson, we are going to learn so much truth from the word of God as we look at uh, education and redemption and how we can connect the two. God bless. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, friends, I did mention to you earlier, uh, I'm glad to, to join you guys tonight. Uh, my name is Rudy Diamas, and I prefer that people call me Brother Rudy. Uh, I told my friend uh, uh, um, Piano Creel that uh, I'm not a pastor, because every time he calls me father, he calls me pastor, you know. Uh, I'm a final year theology student at Yarebach College of higher education. I'm writing my final exams uh, next week. Uh, but I'm glad to be here. Of course, I'm married to the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Uh, her name is Virginie Diamas, and I have four beautiful children. And uh, I'm just privileged to be here with you guys tonight. Honored to be here. Of course, I, I'm standing in for my good friend, Enrico Lowe, who, who's, yeah, and, um, but I'm glad to be here. And I know the Lord will bless us richly. And I'm excited to, to get to know you guys better and to, to listen to, to you guys tonight, what God has placed on your hearts tonight and um, I know we will have a blessing tonight um, as we gather around his word uh, may he and he alone be glorified once again tonight and he will lift people towards him so once again thank you for for allowing me to be part of the team tonight god bless amen Yes, Enver, over to you, brother. Give us an introduction of yourself. Right. Good evening, gentlemen. Nice to see you again, Gareth. Um, my friend, um, Rudy Diamas, eh? Um, yeah, and like Rudy said, I'm uh, also married to one wife, uh, Claudette Lowe. So I invent this tonight because um, I feel that the lesson is so connected to you know, our learning and stuff. Um, I know God is going to bless us. Most of us um, preach today, you know, uh, that the Holy Spirit will lead us. But it's good to be back again um, tonight. And I know that um, we're going to have a good time and like, same as the last time. As you can see, Iron just got crash here. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in the background. He can get crash and, and and if he wants to talk, he can definitely talk and 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 share his knowledge. Remember, we learn from everyone. I'm a firm believer from the richest man, the most cleverest man to the to the homeless man. We learn from everyone. And yes, uh, brother Gav made an appeal. So uh, those that want to travel. Uh, a very far to Saldana and want to share. <laughs> uh, um, please, um, you can inbox Brother Gareth. Uh, the good thing of that, once you go over there, because of the distance, after going there and preaching there, you are officially an evangelist. Say amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump into the lesson study, lesson number eight, and we're going to ask uh, Brother Gigi uh, to take or dive. Uh, for us into Sabbath and then Sunday, which is entitled The Image of God. And if there's anyone who want to comment while he's busy, feel free. Over to you, Brother G. Thanks so much, man. For it. Um, yeah, Sabbath lesson is, is very, very, very interesting. The Bible tells a long story about God and his people. Now, sometimes the story is viewed um, as a story that's gone wrong, that, that's ori and, you know, temporarily. But sometimes it's seen as a story of a father and his rebellious children. And they eventually come right to the end of the story. But for our purposes this week, what we're going to talk about is that we're going to discover in the Bible stories theme, namely that of a teacher and his students. And these students, they keep failing their tests, failing, failing. He just keeps on teaching and explaining again and again until eventually some learn it. Um, as Brother Kiyomo can actually, uh, he can actually relate to um, as he's an educator. Now, 
the Bible is not like unlike our own human stories that we know so well, but with one exception. Story of God and his people, this has a good ending and it reaches its goal. Divine grace towards his people assures that ours come. So divine grace, don't forget that. Let's just keep that in our minds. The human responsibility in this relationship has often been misunderstood and even dreaded by many who have thought of it as, uh, as, as in erroneous. But in fact, the Bible story is essentially an invitation to know God and understand His word. Learning to know how God almost responds to His grace. We cannot earn such grace, but we can learn about it. And this is what Christian education, if not at its core, education teaching us about the grace. So Christian education, right? And grace as well. We must remember that as well. And as we go on to Sunday, it's called the image of God. Now many people, many people must understand this. And um, in Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27, and Genesis 5, verse 1 and 3, these texts, the question is asked about these texts, what do they teach us about how God originally created humanity? And then what happened to humanity after sin? So the phrase, the image of God, has captivated in interpreters of the Bible for centuries. What is the image of God? What is this image in which the first humans were created? For example, does God, um, does, it, does it mean when God looked in the mirror and he formed his new creation to look like him? Or does it mean that humans are more like God than any other life form on earth? And, uh, or does it refer to a spiritual intellectual similarity and compatibility between the creator and his human creation? Now, the scriptures do not give any precise explanation of this expression, even though lots of scholars have derived from scripture many interpretations of what it could mean. And we can see that after sin, the image has been changed, which is why Ellen White wrote in the book Education, page 14 to 16, she wrote, the goal of education is to restore in man the image of his maker. Now, here's a question. How can remarkable goal. First, we need to remember that God made us to have a relationship with him. Somewhat as parents do uh, with their children, so we can relate. He made us in his image. The same way parents have children in their image, you know, so that he can bring us up to be his children who belong to his family. He can communicate with us and form long-lasting relationships with us. So the image of God is therefore more of a, a image. And there's two things that this enables, one divine and other human. And these need to have a meeting of the two minds. So this is precisely what happens in education. First at home, when the parents teach the children, later the parents send the children off to school. And um, at school, would the teachers take over the work of education? So apparently God intended this process of education we know so well when distinguishing us from any other life forms. He made us in his own image. He did it so that he can teach us and we can learn from him until his image is reflected in ours. Now, when they say image, we actually mean his mind is reflected in ours. So to summarize what I've said there, it's like a parent that raises the child a certain way and you know they expect the child to reflect themselves because as a, as a healthy parent, you would expect, um, you would teach your child about values, besides love, but values and virtue well. And these things will help them gain a lot in life. But as they go through the years and uh, the, the, the experience in life, there's ups and downs, there's choices they make that were wrong, just like Jesus experienced with the disciples. And then the disciples say, all right, they, they understand, Master, and then they were taught again and they do the same thing over and over. But as they go on, the sad thing is many people actually despise Jesus for this. They say, look, not all the disciples turned out well. But they had the teacher, God himself, teaching them. But the point is, that just shows even more how graceful God is. God says, I give you freedom of choice. And without freedom of choice, you will not learn to love. So this is a powerful, powerful way method that Jesus uses. And we should share that method with others. Um, another interesting fact is that look at Satan, Lucifer. God was the perfect parent. He parented Lucifer. 
and look what happened. He chose his own path. So as we go along, I'm um, going to give it over to Kevin. We can learn a lot, a lot from this lesson, especially parents. You must remember societies are the way they are because parents have that responsibility to grow homes. So let us learn together. Amen, brother. Amen. Now, I like what uh, Gareth mentioned as he was concluding there. He said that, look at the way the disciples turned out. Some of them, um, we know Judas, for example, the way he turned out, um, despite having Jesus as a teacher, you know, he had free will. He chose what he wanted. And when you look at the Bible, how it describes Christ, it talks about him in so many different ways. He says he's the son of God, the Messiah, uh, the son of man, the savior, the redeemer, the Lord, the lamp of God. So many names are attached to God or to Jesus Christ, the son of God or being God himself. And yet you find that in most New Testament writers or stories, he's referred to as rabbi or they call him the master or the teacher, you know, and it's quite interesting because he didn't go to any of the schools of the prophets, but yet he had the title teacher. And um, yeah. when one of the writers in the gospel says they, were, they marveled at the way he taught because no man taught as Christ did teach, you know, and I was looking at what Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 11, when you go from verse one up to verse nine, um, the summary of it shows us that um, the spirit of the Lord will rest mm -hmm. upon Christ and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and, and, and spirit of mind, spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And when you go through that whole chapter, it will reveal to you that um, through God um, using Christ, he wanted to teach, he wanted to counsel, he wanted to give wisdom, he wanted to give knowledge. And that's what God wanted to do when he, when he brought Christ, to fill the world with knowledge. When you go to verse 11, you know, to fill the world with knowledge as the waters cover the sea. You know, I like this mm. quote from uh, the book Education. I'll have to read part of it. Uh, page 30, it says, now the true teacher is not satisfied with second rate work. Uh, most teachers would know that. He's not satisfied with directing his students to a standard lower than the highest, which is it is possible for them to attain. And says he cannot be content with imparting to them only technical knowledge, with making them merely clever accountants, skillful artisans, successful tradesmen. It is his ambition to inspire them with principles of truth, obedience, honor, integrity, and purity, principles that will make them a positive force for the, for the stability and the upliftment of society. And this is what we see in Christ. Um, he took fishermen oh. and he made them fishers of men. He didn't mm. want to make them substandard um, followers. And the quotation continues and says, uh, in the highest sense, the work of education and the work of redemption are one. So you can't separate education and the work of redemption. When Mm. People talk about educating their children and educating believers in Christ. That work should have a focus of redemption. And my teaching my fellow brothers and sisters in the faith to follow Christ so that they may have a saving relationship with him or just to be mere argumenters or mere uh, people who like to contradict other churches. So when you talk about education in the true sense, it's to make another believer want to know more about Christ and his saving knowledge or his saving grace. And then it says, um, now, the work of redemption and education are one, as in redemption, and says, other, other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So the foundation of education and the foundation of redemption is Christ, and we can't separate the two. And when you continue, you find that Nicodemus goes to Christ uh, at night and he says, I like the words that Nicodemus uses when you go to John chapter 3. He says, um, teacher, we know. So Nicodemus uses the pronoun we because he wasn't talking about himself alone. Mm. But even the, the other scribes and the Pharisees, they knew this, but they never wanted to acknowledge. So we see how powerful Christ was as a teacher. And when you look at the prophets and you look at Moses, the writings from Old Testament, they all show that education is so vital. Um, the book or the first five books, the Torah, you find that um, people usually say the Torah translates to the law. Uh, but when you go deeper into the meaning of the word Torah, it actually means instructions or teaching. And so when God gave Moses the writings of the Torah or when he inspired him to write, 
He was actually saying, Moses, I want you to instruct or I want you to educate the children of Israel in these social, economic, political, health principles that will guide them yeah. and make them better citizens. And um, maybe my last comment, I like how um, it mentions here that looking at the Gospels, it says the Gospels abound with materials intended for educational purposes, especially in the parables of Jesus. So when you look at Christ, Christ's parables, he always wanted to teach. He says the kingdom of heaven is as, you know, he's, he, was, he was trying to teach. And we find also Paul, when he writes, um, he would begin with a strong gospel proclamation and he would end with, with educational material. Um, he would look at practical Christian life issues. And then the book of Revelation itself, the book that many people don't like to read, the book of Revelation also is full of educational material. Uh, when you look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 to 5, um, it shows the disclosure, the unrolling of the future of Christ's church. And also in that book, it's revealed that Christ, the Lamb of God, is the master teacher. So um, as um, our friends also continue to share with us from the lesson, I want us to be able to remember that you can't separate true education from the plan of redemption. Thank you so much for that, Brother Gaddis and uh, uh, um, Brother Kevin. I see Brother Gaddis' lights going on and off. So I want to make sure that um, ESCOM is not affecting us over there. Just a shout out for those watching us from Facebook. Um, Lord thank you for watching. Uh, Pastor Dennis Howard, thank you for always supporting. Feel free to I know that you're someone that's very, very vocal. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a part of our, our, our exec, but, but, um, um, Brother Tyrant Prince is watching from the comfort of his home. And also, uh, also is a Brother Keenan Uppington. Thank you for that, uh, Brother uh, uh, Kevin and Brother Gareth, covering us on Sabbath to Sunday, and Kevin uh, covering Monday and Tuesday. Um, and is there any comments from your side? Um, I find it very strange that you're very quiet. Usually you're the, you're the most vocal. Talk to me, brother. Yeah, when I didn't want to interrupt um, the two brothers, they spoke very eloquently and so profoundly. So I just let them be, you know, um, I just want to rewind quickly. Um, the, 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 the title for this this week, for a lot of scholars, including yourself, Uncle Manny, and um, you guys don't just leave words just like that hanging in the air. <laughs> so just... Going into like a, a, a normal you know, or proper Adventist, we will always go into the, 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 you know, education. What is education all about? Redemption, what is redemption all about? So the, the, the um, dictionary describes education as the process of learning, you know, or the acquisition of knowledge, skills, values, beliefs, and habits. Right, and when it comes to redemption, redemption is none other than um, the action of being saved, being saved from sin, error, or evil. Um, Brother Kerat, Kerat um, sum, uh, summarized the Sunday portion so beautiful. It's, it's almost like the, 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 the author is describing a teacher and his students. However, these students keep failing and that is that is how I see myself I'm not gonna say us I'm gonna speak about myself as as, as a student that keeps failing the test but however it doesn't just stop there as brother Garrett mentioned um, this this teacher will continue explaining and and forgiving and forgiving and, and the beauty part that, 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 that I found in, 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 in Sunday and, and, and the introduction is that this is none other than the perfect plan of redemption God's perfect plan of redemption the, what happened there in Sunday is we see the image of God now in this image of God this image of God, God's image was a perfect image. When God created this image, it was an image that was of a relationship between um, God and man. And this was a perfect relationship before the fall, obviously. 
And we can see that this, this image has been changed, um, as Brad Garrett so, so rightly um, uh, explained there. And God's ideal, God's plan of redemption was to restore that image again, the perfect image. And how do you restore that image? It's, it's by relationship. You understand? Relationship. God was still, God still wants to continue to, to, to build that relationship. And it, 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 it likens uh, the relationship is to father and son or, 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 or parents and the children. And that is how God is with us, you know. Um, it's an ongoing, being being a dad of, of, of two boys, um, I have to be a referee at times, eh? And it's, it's, it's a continual process. It's, it, it doesn't end. And when you think you've arrived, <laughs> then you need to up your game more, you know, and sometimes you just need to stand back and, 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 and let them be, you understand? So, and, and, and sometimes you just leave, need to leave them also to be so that they can learn, but then you don't stand too far back so that they can hurt each other or, or, or damage the image too much. So sometimes you just need to kick in. But I, I feel this is such a beautiful, beautiful lesson. Um, and um, just, just coming back to um, the, the representation, it represents both the physical aspect of our, our beings as, as, you know, when, when God created, he created us in the image of, of God, in his likeness. So it's a physical as well as a spiritual um, image there. It's a, represent, uh, a re representation of the God being. So, so the more we spend time with God, the more we're supposed to start looking like God. So that is the restoration. That is the plan of, of, of salvation. And this is what the lesson is trying to bring back, that we need to get back to the to, to And um, Brother Kevin, yeah, so so is 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 being described in so many different forms. The Son of God, and the Redeemer, it uses us right in the tree in Italy and and in Judea. His disciples and those that followed him learned directly from him. Um, however, um, and they learned to call to, to call him um, um, Jesus. But however, they failed the test as, as we could. But I think uh, we'll get in, onto the lesson later, the, the, the Holy Spirit. Right? And then um, what the beauty part of Isaiah that I just Given um, amidst all dangers, God will be full of knowledge, and I think this was so beautiful. Um, Isaiah chapter eleven, verse nine. Um, it says, "I know Isaiah eleven from one one to coming, basically of of the Messiah, right?" But then in verse 9, it says, amidst all the dangers, amidst everything that, that is happening with us right now, that is not going according to um, the, the perfect plan, God's holy mountain, his people will neither be harmed nor destroyed, for the earth will be full of knowledge of the Lord is the waters you you touched on on, on Nicodemus's question, uh, brother Kevin. Um, how can how can I be born again? And and and, and Jesus' re reply was just a simple: No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. And 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 that is just touching on the basics there. And um, and what I've also noticed, um, gentlemen, that um, God's word. And we, 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 we're speaking as students right here now. And as you know, Brother Uncle Mini, um, as a student, uh, always 
always learning. I don't know, I haven't studied law. You can never arrive. There is always something to learn. And I mean, we, um, every time when we touch on a story and when you come back, it's so present. <laughs> you, you, you can always learn something for the, for the moment. You know, it, uh, God's word is alive, man. You, you get, when you come back again after a week or two months, something else jumps up and it's uh, God's word is alive. You can never, you can never arrive. <laughs> and, and, and that I found to be such a beautiful part as well. Like the learning is it is relevant. It is pretty good. It's a lot. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for that, Brother Anver. Um, before uh, uh, um, Brother Rudy speaks, just a comment from Facebook from uh, Tyler Prince Law. He says that the system of education instituted at the beginning of the world was to be a model for man throughout all of the time. As an, as an illustration of its principles, yeah. a model school established in Eden, the home of our first parents. The Garden of Eden was the schoolroom. Nature was a lesson book. The great himself was the instructor. And the parents of the human family were the students. Hey, the man is very eloquent with his words. That sounds to me like he copy-pasted somewhere, yeah. but, uh, but, uh, but I won't <laughs> just that yet. Thank you so much for that. We got a few more people. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that, 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 that just joined us. We have um, Angelique Norman, one of my neighbors. Thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, um, and uh, one of my soccer teammates, Cheval van der Berg. Thanks for joining us. So over to you, Pastor. I, I, um, forgive me, brother. But um, I am known as a prophet. So over to you, Pastor Rudy, for, uh, cover, uh, um, to cover for us Thursday, or Wednesday and Thursday, rather. Uh, yes, friends, can you hear me? Yes, Pastor. But oh. we, uh, we can't see a beautiful face. Um, I think you, you are camera shy, I guess, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, do you want, do you guys want to see my face? I think your we, wives are, your wives are more, more beautiful than, than myself. I think you want, to, I don't want to see your wives, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway... Yeah, uh, I've got um, Wednesday and uh, Thursday, and Wednesday is speaking about the topic there is wise men and women. So I, 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 don't, I don't know why the author includes the woman there. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's maybe intentional that he includes the woman there because they are sometimes so forsaken, you know, and neglected in, in, in our church even. But nevertheless, um, it, it's, 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 then it, of course, it gives us some Bible verses there but one thing that stood out is of course first kings 4 verse 29 to 34 which i won't read now but the question in the lesson study was is we're asking that what does this teach us about the importance of wisdom now before i'm going to delve in the lesson study i just want our listeners who might not know there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom although i believe uh, both are very important you know uh, of course the difference between the two is knowledge is information gained through experience, reasoning, uh, or acquaintance. And knowledge can exist without wisdom, of course, uh, but not the other way around. In other words, you, you, if you have wisdom, you will automatically have knowledge. And uh, it's good to have a knowledge of God, I would, I would, I would uh, suggest, but that's not enough. We need wisdom. And of course, when we read James 1 verse 5, we will, we will, we will see why wisdom is so important. Uh, wisdom, according to James, is a gift from God. And, uh, and of course, God blesses us, friends, with wisdom in order for us to glorify him and use the knowledge we have on him. Now, of course, we all know the, the famous verse of Proverbs 9 verse 10 that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy one is understanding and we know of course uh, also that uh, 
this wise man in this world, if I can put it, wise man who doesn't know God, who doesn't fear God, uh, God regards their wisdom as foolishness. Now, when we come back to our lesson study, we will we know we of course we know that Solomon he asked God for for um, for wisdom and not uh, wealth, and we know of course that God blesses him with both. He was, of course, according to the Bible, most probably probably the, the wisest man alive uh, in the world. Uh, that, even, even in the world, uh, I know some guys, uh, they find out about the internet and all these guys, Bill Gates and all these guys. But according to the Bible, they, they wouldn't have been measured by this great man of God. But we, note, we notice, I just want to mention this to us. We notice that it's so easy for us to get corrupted and get prideful when we are when we are wise and we are intelligent, uh, if we are not constantly staying close to God, and this is, this is my first key on, on Wednesday, uh, we need to, to gain wisdom. You need to spend intentional time with God every day by searching the scriptures, by communicating with him, talking to him and, and, and listening to him because he's the one who gave us wisdom. It's a gift. But we, we know that this man, Solomon, he later on gave himself away to wine and woman. We, you know the story, uh, ungodly lifestyle. And actually, he lost that wisdom. He became foolish. And he will actually uh, mention it, mentioned that in the, in the end of his lifetime, that he almost lost heaven because he became foolish, he, 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 uh, as we know. Um, so I, was, <laughs> I just want to mention that to us that uh, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men freely or, of course, liberally and ab abrade it not, and it shall be given. Um, and the Bible reveals to us that the mind of God is not human ideas. It comes through Jesus, the incarnate word, who gives us wisdom, who gives us a, who gives us a knowledge of God. So we have to study the lifestyle of the life of Jesus to know who God is. And if we really seek wisdom, just look at Christ, you know? And of course, when it comes to spending time with his father, uh, searching the scriptures, and of course, talk, praying, uh, we know that his wisdom comes from, from that. And uh, so I don't know if you guys want to, to interject or come in here, uh, but uh, wisdom is not only practical, it also has a theological side to it. For it begins with faith in God and follows certain foundational principles. As I mentioned now, of course, Proverbs 1 verse 5, Proverbs 1 verse 7. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to interject. Just come in with a thought there before I uh, went over to Thursday. Yes. Is there anyone that's yes. touched on Enver? I know you're the, you're the yes. man. There we go. There. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry. I got so excited, man, when, when Brother Rudy... Um, I read the, the Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 because that was the beginning of a, of a title of, of, of a sermon that I'm busy preparing, man. And I was looking at the fear. We obviously know the fear as in reverence, right? But yeah. but more than that, just, you know, just the, 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 the reverence of God is already the, the, the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of wisdom. So in other words, you start learning directly from God um, the right ways, man, and I don't know if you can feel it. It's almost like that excitement, Rudy. I know you as uh, studying as a pastor. You know, to, once you have the the right knowledge to 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 then speak to the to the church, you just want to, you know, <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> like you want to jump ahead of the Holy Spirit. But the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, my brothers. And um, I almost said and sisters, but I will just keep it, my brothers. But I know sisters are watching, so. I'm saying my brothers and my sisters, but not to the panel here. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yo, that that's that, that that one can 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 grasp from there because from 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 the fear. Or from the beginning of, of, of wisdom, you save yourself, happen to you. Because, because of ignorance, because of a lack of knowledge, put it to the devil. But um, we have so much 
um, knowledge of our forefathers, you know, um, how no one them did it, how Abraham did it, how, you know, we there's so much Samson, there's so much examples. Jacob, like we said last time, and we don't have to do the same mistakes. Now, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that, my friends, just I just wanted to, 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 to touch on that, that the, the, the aspect of, of, of learning, you know, um, the minute you start fearing God, that will be the beginning of your wisdom. Sorry, brother. No, thank you. Thank you, my good friend. I can see that uh, that sermon will be powerful, my friend, Enver, uh, because I can hear you sharing with us. And uh, thank you for that insights. Oh, my, I, 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 you see, I'm sitting in a dark room. So even if my, if you can, if my, my, my video is on, you will not be able to see me, guys. Um, but nevertheless, I don't know if anyone else would like to reflect on Wednesday, or can I go on to Thursday, my brother? Is, is there anyone else who would like to say something about on, on Wednesday? Uh, yes, brother Rudy, you can just 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 continue for us. You just continue for us. Keep it rolling. <laughs> okay, so I didn't even know how much time uh, you know uh, I have with, on 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 one day. They didn't tell me if do I have five minutes or two minutes. So I'm just going with the motion now. Yes, you have as much time as the spirit leads, brother. As much time. <laughs> okay. All right. But anyway, I, I, I know when it comes to wisdom, we can speak the whole night on that topic alone, uh, of course. And, uh, you know, as a student here at the Alderberg College, uh, you, you gain a lot of knowledge in this four years. These people are giving you actually um, <laughs> um, the work of a doctor, the, 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 the amount of work is, uh, is, is almost like they are, you are, they are teaching you, they prepare you to be a doctor in theology, guys. So I just want to say, if you come to Yaribo College, just, just I warn you about that, you know, a lot of knowledge, but that knowledge will be meaningful, of course, and I'm prepared now to go to Thursday, but before I go to Thursday, I just want to say that sometimes people are so eager to gain knowledge, especially knowledge of the Bible, but they lack still that wisdom and I've, I've, come to, I've, I've come to notice that many people are, are eager to have this knowledge of this God whom they don't know personally for themselves. And they want to break with this information about this God who they don't know personally, you know. And uh, these days, everybody can speak about Jesus Christ. You know, everybody, you got uh, apostles and evangelists, whatever. And uh, people are easy to, to speak about this God uh, and but do you know this God personally for yourself or is just knowing stuff about him? You know, uh, we can talk tonight and we can talk and it's good to talk about God. But I just want to know uh, you, you, you need to humble yourself uh, before this God so that he can reveal his mind to you so that you can have his mind. You need to understand it's not about you. It's about this God who we can trigger. We can't. We, we, he will give glimpses of himself to us, but we will never, of course, really fully comprehend this big God, you know. But he wants to reveal himself to us as we dig deeper into his word. There's where the wisdom comes from. Not, not, not fishing on the surface, but really with a humble spirit says, God, I want you to reveal yourself, as Moses says, to me, because I want, I want to have a correct understanding who you are. I don't want to represent you incorrectly to the world. And um, so I've, I've come to know, and I'm saying, this, saying this with all respect, you know, uh, in my church, I'm a born Adventist. Sometimes people are taking a, 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 each other apart in lesson studies. And you, I don't feel, feel the spirit because we are bragging now. And I studied the lesson study better than you. And, and that spirit is not of God, guys. And I'm a very straightforward guy, as you, a guy, as you can hear <laughs> me speaking now. Uh, and I love, I love God's church, but I want to, to, to just to make sure that we understand it's not about us. We need to know this God personally for ourselves. And when we open our mouths, uh, God will re uh, reward his word. People, his word will not turn to him void because we, we are speaking correctly about this God. We, we know who we are talking about. <laughs> All right. So yeah, education in the early church. One of, one of the friends uh, mentioned earlier about the disciples, of course, who have a three and a half years journey with Christ. And still after the three and a half journey, they didn't get it. And, and, and that's because they have the, still this worldly mindset of, of domination. They want to build their own empire. 
and and sometimes even I, I like to, uh, to I like to to apply the the the, the I, I, of course we need to apply scripture to our context, uh, and and I've still noticed that certain people they are in church for years and they listen to how many sermons, and uh, sitting at the feet of Jesus, but as Paul uh, saying to the to the to the Ephesians, you, I still need to to feed you with milk. You are actually actually still worldly people living in the flesh and not in the spirit you know and uh, so we we need to be careful when we when we deal with deal with god's word that we are really open to his word uh, we really come with a heart who and in humility to god wanted to, to 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 listen to his word and of course then we apply the second principle just to apply his word but these guys are with christ for three and a half years and they didn't get it and it's, so it's possible for us also to be in church for how many years, and we try to to start out to, to develop our own world view of God because this God must fit into our uh, picture, you know, and our world view. Uh, so he will God, this God will be will be satisfied with this, uh, but not with that. That will be fine, but not that. But we see here uh, the lack of the Holy Spirit in in these disciples. I would believe the reason. That's why Christ had to come and, 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 and the Holy Spirit had to descend on these guys so that they can get it, you know, because they were still with God, with Jesus, but still have selfish motives, you know. And, of course, I want to just mention, before I forgot to just apply this also to our context in terms of education. Uh, I just want to, before I forget, I just want to mention that as educators, and of course, uh, you don't have to teach at the school. We're all educators in some way because you, when you study God's word, you, you share that word with your colleagues at work, your friends, your family, uh, and your church family, etc. cetera. Um, but we, we see here that these guys lack the Holy Spirit. That's why they had to wait for the Holy Spirit, the advocate, as we see in this lesson study here. Then they had to wait for the Spirit. And sometimes we are so in a hurry because I want to prepare this, and I have I have this ideas. I want to bring this idea in my sermon, and I want to sound good so people can say I'm so I'm so deep and profound. But then it it might just lack the Holy Spirit because you are ahead of the Holy Spirit. You don't wait for Him and walk with Him. Uh, so these guys, uh, they, they were taught by by Jesus, but still, this one wants to sit in sit in the right hand side. This one on the left hand side. And the Holy Spirit is key for me on in Thursday's lesson, guys, that they had to wait for him. And, and once he um, came over them, they were powerful. Of course, uh, Peter preached and 2,000 people, 3,000 people on one day were baptized, um, came to the repentance. And of course, and, and what's, what, is, what is interesting for me, friends, at the end of, of Thursday, I just want to read it to you guys. It says, we have the mind of Christ meaning that spiritual Christians have access even to the mind of God. But the key word there is spiritual Christians. And, there's, and, and, and thus to any amount of learning and understanding these guys will have who are spiritual. And we find that, of course, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 10 to 13. And, and, and so for me, uh, the educator, and somebody mentioned earlier about education and and the redemption works hand to hand. The person quotes Ellen White. Uh, so I, I have to understand. I need to understand to understand if I want to be a successful teacher in in, in God's eyes. Anyway, I need to be a I need I need to be a spiritual Christian, meaning uh, I need to walk with God's spirit as a friend wherever I go in my daily walk. He is with me. That is how you. That is how you are spiritual. It's not a devotion in the morning. And, and then a devotion in the evening, and maybe now and then during the day you talk to God. But I believe this is this is the, this is the attitude of prayer we're talking about. It is the attitude of worship where you are constantly uh, aware of God's presence with you, and and that is how you as an educator, whether your family, your church, uh, you know, your work, that is how you make the difference. So I, of course I I I'm, 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 <laughs> I know I, I I focus on something else maybe. Not maybe directly what the lesson is saying here, but I, I know I touched on certain points, but I would like somebody else, maybe just an hour to allow somebody else to, to bring another angle in when it comes to Thursday's lesson study, friends. 
Thank you so much, Pastor. That was beautifully done. And thank you for being frank. Um, um, at With us, when we do our lesson study, we are very frank about it. And it's important that, that these things get gets addressed as well in a, in, a, in a very, very spiritual manner. So thank you very much for that. I've got a few comments here before the, the, the other panelists uh, comment or add uh, some, some spice to the, to, 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 um, to the meat for Thursday. Um, Laurel says, amen. The only knowledge worth having is for practical purpose in life is the knowledge of God, which begin with the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 9 verse 10. Also a shout out for to Varel and Don for, for joining us, as well as Luvuyo Zondani for joining us. I got another comment here, um, 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 uh, um, Brother Pastor Rudy, um, uh, uh, the individual uh, uh, is asking, are you perhaps on the run? Because they can't see your face here. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, this, this light is actually very dark. Uh, the light is on in my living room, as you can see, uh, guys. But uh, it's not so powerful. Uh, yeah. I, must, I must ask for another. I must get another light for me. So sorry, sorry for that. That's why I put my light, my, my, my video off earlier because I know you guys won't be able to see me anyhow, you know? Yeah. No problem, Pastor. That is a clear indication that you must come back on the panel <laughs> sooner. So that's a clear indication. Back here. Over <laughs> to you, Edward. Yeah, I just wanted to say, no, brother, Pastor, Rudy, you must come to the light, man. You must come into the light now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> thank you so much for that um i've got a few questions here um uh, uh, uh and this is open for the whole panel to answer the first question is and it's very very basic questions um um and the first question is how important is the educational work for the mission of the church how important is the educational work mm for the mission of the church. Over to you, panel. All right. Pastor, much, much better. Now mm. um, the people can see your beautiful face. I guess we'll, we'll, I mean, get, a lot of, we'll get a lot of comments now. <laughs> Ready? Now my, I think my phone is Friday my phone after we answer the question. <laughs> please, please um, forgive me, Gareth. Touch with me on Friday. And then once you're done, you can, you can be the first one to answer that question. Over to you, Gareth. Uh, oh, I'll delegate somebody to answer that question. <laughs> you know, um, look, Friday is it's just a further thought. Uh, I'm going to read Ellen White. It's easier. Um, well, let me just read what the author says. And there's, there's a quote here later on, which we can go through. The Great Gospel Commission, found in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, set in motion a remarkable religious movement throughout the whole world. Here, a few apostles, missionaries, which these two words actually mean the same thing, it means those who are sent, went throughout the whole world and gathered up students, made them into disciples, called them to believe in Jesus, baptized them, and proceeded to teach them all the things Jesus had commanded them. The picture is that of Christian converts from around the world, representing different cultures and speaking different languages, coming out of the waters of baptism, only to enter a school and begin their education. This is not surprising, for they still had much to learn. The reason Christians are always learning is not just intellectual curiosity or an eagerness to master knowledge, but rather that the Christian life and faith permeates every corner of daily life. That is such a true statement. There is so much to learn. Because of that, the letters of the New Testament contain both a proclamation about Jesus which is sometimes called the New Testament. Um, and education in all things Christians have to learn, sometimes called by the New Testament word um, didak. The first word there was kerygma. And the second word didak, um, a good example of proclamation is seen in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2, whereas education begins in 1 Corinthians 4 and continues on and off in the rest of the letter. What is it? Christians have to learn work, rest, social issues, community relations, church and worship, economics, philanthropy, relations with authorities, counseling, your family systems, marriage relations and child hearing, food and its preparation, clothing, and even getting old and preparing for the end of life, both one's personal life and the life of this world. 
to be a Christian means to learn something, all these things. Understanding them doesn't come naturally, and it has to be learned. So that last paragraph is a mouthful. That actually encapsulates every single thing of our life. Wow, work, race, social issues, community relations, church, worship, economics, philanthropy, relations with authorities. Yo, you, you look at something, I just want to put in something. Look at the news. Look at everything on the social media. It is, it's directly related to these things. You know, especially now, that I'm just looking at something. Relations is people putting, you know, they, they're taking the, the law into their own hands. They're going into places. They just, you know, they 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 questioning. Authority. The family systems as well. Look at that. If you have, if you take any of these words and you add the word um, unhealthy, then you have chaos. You have pain. And if you look at our country, you'll see in many all the countries in the world basically. But even our churches, like you said, look at it. Social issues. If there's unhealthy social issues in the church, pain, stress, problems. Marriage relations. Poor marriage relations. Pain. Stress problems. Family systems, it's poor, it's unhealthy, you got a lot of issues. If it's healthy again, things are much better, more focused. These values, and if all of these are studied like the author's trying to say, all of these are actually found in the Bible. So in the outside world, if you put this into our world today, not now the religious world, if we have healthy issues like this, all of these are addressed healthily. Perfect, you left peace. And uh, people and, and the audacity to say, ah, the Bible doesn't cover everything. It covers everything. So remember that it has to be learned. Now the question, how important is the educational work for the mission of the church? How are you going to teach somebody something if you're not educated on the subject? You know? It's like, uh, I want to teach man, but like after this lesson, I'm going to, when the, when the show is done, I'm going to actually teach Manfred about that first statement he made about Chelsea, you see. I'm going to have to educate him later on on the truth. But for now, we will deal with what we're dealing with now. But you can take it in any subject. In the family life, you know, how important is education? Wow, it's powerful. And church involves that. What do they say? When you come to church on the Sabbath, how well you educated your children in the week depends on how well they will react in their church. Church is not supposed to, that Sabbath is not meant to educate you. You're supposed to come there and give your views and say, and then your child and your wife, or you yourself, you say in the lesson study, my opinion, my this, my that, or, or, or you're supposed to say, wow, I don't even knew that. I like your point of view. And this this is like, a, how can I say, if you value people, we learn about this word again, I keep on saying it, then definitely that you value people, this is how you will talk to them afterwards. Um, if you sit in church and somebody's you know, wearing whatever, you won't just blurt it out and cause an argument. I value you. You know, I will find that the most subtle way to go in and ask you, hey, I thought you know, I'm, I'm, you know, even, even murmur like I am now because you, you just don't want to offend the person. But we don't find that. And I think Jesus teaches us values. And when you are educated the way Christ wants to educate you, this will be your approach. Jesus teaches you to be tactful. That's also important. Everything we do, we were taught. Um, sadly, I'm just going to close with the sadly is that many people who are many people who are, are abrupt, many people who are, they learn something, they have knowledge, but they don't know how to use it. They don't have wisdom. Is the ability to use that knowledge in such a way that it matures, that it that it actually kept, it gains you 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 gain something good. And the people are taught that the educated, some children are just naturally just wild because that's how they pay. Oh, they are, and unrealizing the parents actually teaches the child to do that. You know, when he comes home and does his homework, you know, maybe that's how his dad reacts to things. That doesn't really simple things that he can try and, say, and when there's an issue, he doesn't involve himself. So he's taught, oh, this is not that important. My parents don't even value it. So why should I? Um, guys who abuse, like they treat girls, like whatever. You know, that's called, they taught that, he learned that somehow, and many of it is learned from Hollywood, the new movies that come out. He sees that, he goes to school the next day, he tries it. That's his education he got. Think about it. So Jesus says, I want to teach my disciples, and I want to help you. And we must just be willing, like uh, like we always say every week. That's why we're here, the four of us, the five of us. That's what we're trying to do.
thank you so much for that eloquent way that you answer that question, uh, Brother Garrett. <laughs> Everything about you just eloquent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Manfred, can I add something? Yes, please. Um, the, the, the brother pastor is not the only one that is actually they, they, they're going on with nobody's light there. Ah, my light was going on and off as well, pastor. I think they, they you know, someone's interfering with us here. Yeah? They're trying to blow our light out. <laughs> I'm sitting in the other room now. <laughs> But if you, you like the presents and the decorations, <laughs> um, I, guys, can I can I ask you, can I ask you something, uh, Gerrit? Are you? Go for yeah. It, yeah. Yes, sir. I think I think I will be I will be much comfortable if you if you if you call me brother, or you call or you call me pastor. But the brother pastor thing is that is <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, brother. Uh, they educated me that way, they did now. So, uh, you see. <laughs> but if, it, if you are comfortable with that, it's fine. But I'm just asking um, if, if it's fine with you. No, we only play. But, um, okay. You know, if, okay. I, if I can also try to answer the question, my friend, uh, my friend who was in the leading chair. Um, mm. You know, if I, I want to bring another angle to this, to this question. Because I believe without strategic planning, you know, mm. uh, truly committed uh, educators, I know some of the guys in the panel maybe it might be educators. I know Mr. Creel is an educator. But without yes. strategic planning, without being intentional, going to class every day, going to work every day, and, and being intentional of God, send somebody to, on, my, on my path today, on my way today, where I can say your word, where, where I can teach your word, uh, but with mission in, in mind, you know? Mm. So uh, I, be, I believe uh, ultimately, guys, that what empowers the church and us is to persist in carefully planned and well-implemented mission. And there is a firm conviction that God, of course, is the sovereign Lord of our mission because his mission friends will succeed. Why will, his, why will he succeed? That is because of his spirit. I mentioned earlier about the spirit that we have to walk with the spirit every day because in spite of our human imperfection, his spirit will prevail. His spirit in us will empower us to do the job. And I, I, I remember the, the verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, where the Lord said to Paul, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so the power of Christ may rest upon me. So sometimes I've noticed that we try to do everything on our, on our own power. We know so much and we want to implement our planning, our strategic planning without the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and we, want, we, we will fail over and over again. But of course, God will, <laughs> hallelujah, God will finish his work uh, because his spirit is powerful. His spirit will complete the work in, in, our, in our imperfection. His spirit will still complete the work and you just need willing vessels. You say, God, I failed here. I need your help. I, I, I'm, I'm broke. Please help me. And uh, I, I'm so glad that I, and I read that we will be conquerors. Uh, we will finish the work. God will finish his work through us because he, he, he sent his spirit to help us in this regard. So, yeah, I'm so excited to know that, friends, that as a, as a pastor in the making, as you guys <laughs> are saying, brother pastor, I, I'm just excited to know that uh, I don't need to fight this battle alone. Jesus promises me the Holy Spirit, who will be my comforter, but who will be my teacher, by my guide. And um, as long as we walk with the Spirit, friends, that is the key to our success. As long as we have and uh, know the person of the Holy Spirit, also in His role, His function in the in the in the, in the Trinity, we will not. Uh, be losers, but he will make us conquerors. So yeah, <laughs> let me stop there because I want to preach now. Let me rather stop there. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, uh, um, uh, um, Mr. Rudy. I think I think that 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 makes it safe, Mr. Rudy. <laughs> uh, uh, Brother Kevin, you want to comment um, perhaps on that? No, I think I would rather comment after um, the next question, so that we don't take too much time for the audience. No problem. The next question. So you can answer it then, Brother Enver, is what did Ellen G. White mean when she wrote, Heaven is a school, Education 301. What did Auntie Ellen, not Ellen Puckies, uh, Brother Gareth, uh, Auntie Ellen, 
mean when she wrote heaven is a school in education page <laughs> one so when you look at that statement uh this is what i i believe um heaven yeah, is a man, school yeah <laughs> we will we will constantly learn you know in heaven and uh you know when you think about the, the angels in heaven the unfallen angels in heaven and you think of the unfallen uh beings uh, they delight to do the will of the Father. And it's just like any student in a school. When they go to school, they know that if I do the will of the teacher, I will get good grades, I will pass, and then I'll excel at the end. And it's the same with us, with, with us when we believe that when we do the will of the Father in heaven, we will live joyfully. We will not have any worries, and there will be no um, rebellion. Um, I was reading with my wife the book, uh, Maranatha, a few days ago, um, one of the devotionals that, you know, in heaven, the, 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 the strife, the rebellion, the envy, the pride, the sin that Satan introduced will never be found in heaven. Why? Because the way they're being taught or the way they view the, the Father, they view God, um, they see him as that wonderful being that we need to learn. And when we learn, we can only be obedient because of what he has done. And so that's why when you look at education and redemption, that Christ dying on the cross was the greatest lesson that heaven could actually teach the universe. And so when, as a human being, I look at the cross and I think about the plan of redemption, for me, it says, I have to be found in this heaven where the school is about obedience. The school is about unfailing, un, 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 un immeasurable love. Um, you know, so that's my view. When you think about heaven as a school, we will learn about this plan of redemption. We will learn about God's love. And I just hope our, our viewers will, will make a decision to be found in heaven. So when Christ comes, uh, let us meet him in the clouds and uh, we'll learn for eternity in heaven. Amen. Amen. This man, Amen. This man Thank you so be, much. Uh, brother, brother Manny, mm -hmm. this man should be called yes, brother pastor, not me. That's brother Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> He should be called by the past that well we, said. No. <laughs> we have officially name and almost you know that ceremony with the with the with the Queen Knight the soldier. We we have we have knighted uh Kevin as brother pastor. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh brother Enver, over to you, my brother. Or um is there also a uh, connotation to your name or is Enver okay? Yeah. Uh, just like that, and uh, <laughs> as plain and as simple as he is. Gentlemen, I'm going to bring back the, the, the basics, and that is the basic instructions before leaving Earth, and that is all it is, eh? as uh, Brother Pastor Kevin just mentioned, that heaven is a school, a field of study, and <laughs> as we mentioned earlier on, the, 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 the learning never stops. The learning never stops. In fact, I want to go back to um, our, our, our memory verse for this week. But I want to go to verse, it says, but it's for you. Continue in what you have learned. Right? And you have become convinced of, because you know those um, from whom you learned it. Right? And how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. And then the, the, the beautiful scripture that I, I, I love, this is my favorite scripture verse, um, that's 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, all scripture is God bread and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that a man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I mean, that is coming straight from the word of God. I don't need to add anything more. And, and you know, Brother Manny and everyone here on the panel, as I was reading that, I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about um, Daniel and his friends because they had to unlearn their culture what they learned from their youth, from at home. They 
unlearn it and learn the biblical counsel in their foundation. And if we can stand in the truth in our foundation, and that is why I say, um, that is why I said earlier on, we have so much truth um, within the Seven Day Adventist circle that um, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot be fooled by error. And 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 that is all I want to say. Just this basic instruction before leaving Earth that makes you wise unto salvation. I will end my comments right there. Uh, Brother Enver, can you hear me? Yes, I can, yeah. Can you hear yes. you? Yes. Sorry, Brother Enver, I um can hear okay, because um um yeah. No, no, thank you so much for that. I just missed on the on the end. Um it can't be my reception because I have fiber. I don't know, I don't know what is your reception, but um I just missed out on 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 the end of your of your comment over there. Folks, we are an hour and 30 minutes into oh, this. Sorry, so man, I, I want to ask, you guys lose any me. final thoughts? Uh, just, just, just at the end, maybe if you can just, just, just repeat that, uh, the last two sentences perhaps. And then from there, we can uh, just touch on and go each one onto our final thoughts. Yes, if I if I if I may go, <laughs> um, something very interesting. I don't. I, I, I see we didn't have, we didn't touch on the, the third question. Of course, of time maybe, but uh, Emma, you mentioned something very interesting, my friend. Uh, that you, we 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 can't be easily fooled in this church when it comes to you know the Bible comes to come to certain doctrines, um, uh, which I agree with you. But if you if, if we notice the question, the, the, the third question on on uh, you know. Uh, friends, um, it, it says there, think about his, his assertion that the rulers and wisdom of the eights will come to nothing. If he could say that back then, what about some of the wisdom of our eights as well? You know, Ellen White warned us that they will, they will come, uh, especially leaders, well-spoken men, uh, you know, in Adventist men that will come with certain teachings and certain professed wisdom that they will call is, is new light and uh, we need to be careful because many will be will be fooled by these uh, so-called great men of God and you know uh, once I uh, hear what you're saying we we, we, um, we have this truth we have this this knowledge of God and we believe we are the remnant church of God and we have a special mission to the world in Revelation 14 verse 6 to 12. And God is other as other sheep in other folds. But I just want to, to to mention to us to the panel here and to our listeners, you know, that many people are, are currently fooled by many good preachers, and that is because I, I mentioned earlier about the Holy Spirit uh, uh, that is not present in people's lives because He must lead us on, unto all truth. But even in our church, many people that will think they have a knowledge of God and they have this wisdom will be fooled by men. Why? Because these men also doesn't have the Holy Spirit, the, the true Spirit of God. And if you are not connected with God daily, you will believe these men. And that's why Paul uh, Paul gives uh, Timothy advice where he says that in the uh, and that they will they will come teachers that will have uh, people will have itching ears and they will have, they will assemble for themselves teachers, you know. Um, and so in, even in our church, we need to be careful, guys. And I'm saying this with all respect as a, as, as, a, as a minister to be. And I'm not trying to be funny here, but I'm a man of God who, 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 who wants to preach the word in, in, in truth, in humiliation, with passion. We need to, be, 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 we need to know the, the, the scripture for ourselves. We need to know the living word, Jesus Christ, for ourselves. As I mentioned earlier, not about, just about him, but we know, need to know this, this, this Christ who humiliated himself and, and go to the cross and die that die to the cross. We have to know him personally, and and then we will not be fooled ever. Because I can tell you, my friend, yeah. uh, there's strange doctrines coming into our church as well today as we speak. We know we know we have debates yeah. about the Holy Spirit previous times, you know, and all other doctrines. 
And if you don't, if you, uh, if, you, if you can't discern, if you don't have a spirit of discernment, which you can only attain by, by having a, a close spirit. relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit, if you don't, then you will be easily fooled by people Amen. even in the church, you know? Amen. So I take, I take God's word seriously, guys. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, I want to be true to God's spirit when he spoke to my heart. I want to say the truth. People will not like me for that, but uh, I love them. They must be view of God. But I was, I was, I was say it in love. I know I love God. I love God's people, but uh, yeah. too many times, I you know preachers are not willing on the pulpits to to preach the word, to shout, to to, to cry the, the 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 alarm loud, you know, because yeah. you want to be in favor of of men. So I, I I don't want to be in favor of men. I want to be in favor of God. Sorry that I'm so long, my good friend, Mr. Many. But I just want to say that uh, in <laughs> conclusion from my side. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much, Pastor. Um, I I can I can I can feel the 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 enthusiasm. Feel that 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 energy. We will definitely ask you to come back on uh, to be part of the panel and also to uh, preach uh, uh, two weeks because I see you have a lot of energy. So we'll give you two weeks, <laughs> <laughs> seven days a week. <laughs> to preach for us on two weeks campaign, yeah. Uh, 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 Brother Gareth or Bishop Gareth, over to you. I, I see that uh, Pastor or, or uh, uh, Brother Pastor Kevin takes it very seriously because he even changed his name. If you look on his screen, it says Brother uh, Pastor. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> Yo, amen. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there. Oh, nice, good one. So, so it's going to be called BP Kevin. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, many, many tell the truth, eh? Tell the truth, man. <laughs> who, who changed his name? <laughs> uh, yeah, my final thoughts is just that education is very, very important. Is Anything there... that you want to progress in or do well, you're going to have to do your best. You're going to have to study it. You're going to have to spend time and you're going to have to use that law of resistance. Basically, um, like if you, see, I say this every week now, if you, uh, if you want to be good, then I'm just that, then you got to do a lot of press-ups. you got to put pressure on it. If you want to be wise in the word, you've got to read it a lot. And if you want wisdom, or like the Holy Spirit, then you've got to open yourself to the Holy Spirit. I like the pastor was saying earlier on, or sorry, the brother, that, you, the guys study, they study, they study, and they're knowledgeable and they're clever, but they don't have the Holy Spirit. And the reason for that is they don't open themselves up. They don't sacrifice. They say, Lord, I repent of this today. This is my problem there. You know, Lord, I was in church. This brother, he was angry with me. You come home from church, you go on your knees, you stand there, you sit alone in the room and you say, God, was I wrong? Please show me. I guarantee you, you're going to be showed, uh, <laughs> shown by God. Put on something then, like we would do in our job, like we would do with our soccer team. We study the other team that we're going to play. Oh, we have everything already waiting. What we're going to check about, what we're going to say about the other team, our team. So I, I say, go watch your movie, watch a video clip, type in is they um, preaching. Then you put in the, the subject that you're struggling with, maybe with this brother. And you watch other people. And if there is, which is really powerful, watch a, a movie of something that you're dealing with. I'm telling you, advertising is the biggest, biggest, biggest thing in the world. And Jesus says it like this. The advertising comes from the Bible. Like, what you behold, you come. So all these adverts you see on TV, why do you buy that? I mean, it's a study. Jesus implemented that. People don't even credit him. But it can go bad. It works for the bad and it works. So sit. And for those people watching this now, that's what you're doing. You're educating us. You're listening to Manfred. Um, Brother Pastor Kevin, <laughs> Brother Edward, and our other brother and me. That's our opinions. And we are basing it. We're trying to base it on what we read. And I don't even notice all five of us come to one conclusion, the same one. So for those who are watching, they actually educate themselves. So all I do is teach your children to do the same. Schoolwork, chores, anything. You'll see. They okay. will become the best. We would, They will have them as leaders. And when they lead us, they will have that tact, that, 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 that vision that oh, God will just bless them. Amen. You will have a great country. Thank you so much for that, Brother Gareth. Um, Out. <laughs> I think you made a bit of a, a, a you, you, you had to clarify that once you come from church, you need to pray. 
<laughs> first pray before you have Sabbath lunch. Yeah. Lunch things things happen. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Edward, over to and for sure, for sure. And then we will go to uh, uh, Brother Edwin. <laughs> and yeah. after, with the, uh, I'm not going to say many, much. Many speaking from experience. Many speaking from experience. <laughs> right. I'm not going to say much. Um, I'll just leave everyone with this. And, and I'm speaking to myself as well, right? The more we learn from God's word, not only our lives change, but also the lives around us will change. Yeah. And For maybe sure. just just to 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 calm um, uh, brother many spirit here, we we mentioned the word a lot. Many 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 many's lives will will change. Many many will be fooled. Brother many. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not naive, but we're not talking about you. But if we were talking to you, brother, I will urge you to change your life <laughs> and change your life. <laughs> but uh, may God bless us all, man. May God bless us all, man. Amen. The, the, Amen. The, the, Amen. Amen. Um, final thoughts. I like the quotation which we've, I think, we've read over the past three weeks, um, which is taken from the book Education, pages, um, I think, fourteen to sixteen that the goal of education is to um, reveal or to create in man the image of the maker. And once as a church or as a family rooted in God, we make it our plan to say, Lord, I want to reflect Christ in my family and I want to reflect Christ in the church and then we'll be able to reflect Christ in the society. Then I'm sure that we will be able to not only reflect Christ, but we'll be able to draw many people um, to a knowledge of a saving God. And that is what we need to be doing as a church, revealing a saving God, not revealing yes. our doctrines, because our doctrines um, are not going to save people, but Christ, who is the center of the doctrines, will be able to save um, those who come to him in faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, before I pray, I'm not pastor and um, just brother Kevin. And shall we bow our heads <laughs> as we pray? Our Father, we'd like to say thank you because you are wonderful. And because you love us so much, you did not leave us without um, the wisdom and the knowledge that is needed. And you gave us the Holy Spirit so that he, because we say he, he may teach us all truth and he may guide us into all knowledge and wisdom. So dear Lord, um, yes, the viewers were watching, your people are going through the scriptures. We pray, Lord, that it may not just be another talk show but we may be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. For we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you for those watching from amen. near and from far, from to Cape Town, from Australia to Greece, wherever you find yourself. Thank you for watching. Please like the page, subscribe on YouTube, and a special thank you to uh, uh, um, our panelists here this evening, the experts. We bring you the very best Cape Town has to offer. So, past, uh, um, um, Mr. Rudy, thank you very much, Mr. Rudy. <laughs> Mr. Gareth, thank you very much. Mr. Enver, thank you very much. And Brother Pastor Kevin, thank you very oh, much. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen and amen, guys. Amen. <laughs> Keep on. Well. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. Bless you guys. Bless you. God bless.